There's a revolution going on. A slowly growing revolution inside our bedrooms. The way we use contraception has changed. On the one side, women are tired of taking birth control, which has strong side effects and an influence on women's mental and physical health. And on the other side, men want to have more options of contraception and they want to be more independent when it comes to family planning. We are Better Birth Control and we're here to talk about the evolution of birth control, how it got even worse in 60 years and what we can do to revolutionize it. But let's start with a simple question. Have you ever been afraid of an unwanted pregnancy? Been afraid becoming a father or a mother unintentionally? There's this fear and uncertainty. You just want to know if you or your partner are pregnant. You know it would change your life completely. And you ask yourself, am I ready to become a father or a mother? How should I finance this? And what should I tell my parents? You might consider an abortion. And let's be honest, everyone knows this fear. To counteract this fear, there's only one solution, better and safer contraception for everyone. In 2021, there's still a long way to go. But first, we need to explain why birth control got even worse. Let me explain this by going back 60 years when the birth control pill first entered the US American market and one year later also the German market. Did you know that it took the investment of a wealthy women's rights activist, Catherine McCormack, and the work of a nurse, Margaret Sanger, to develop the first birth control pill? Back then in the 50s and even before, there were many unintended pregnancies and also self-abortions, which were a serious risk to the life of women. This investment of Catherine McCormack was a game changer. It was a huge step for women who had no choice about becoming pregnant or not. So the release of the first birth control pill marked the beginning of a new era of sexual self-determination and freedom. But let's take a closer look at the birth control pill today, 60 years later. Yes, women now can control their reproductivity, and yes, the number of unintended pregnancies has decreased. But at the same time, the birth control pill entails a bunch of side effects, like depression, loss of libido, mood swings, headaches, and so on and so forth. And there's an increased risk of getting a thrombosis which can potentially endanger a woman's life. While a lot of innovation has happened in the past 60 years, the birth control pill has hardly changed. Let's take the car as an example. The first car is not at all similar to modern cars. Cars today have seat belts, airbags, ABS systems, but the birth control pill is still the same. Actually, instead of getting better, in the past couple of decades, the birth control pill got even worse. How can it become even worse and what do we mean by it? Let me explain it. You can divide the development of the birth control pill into four generations. There are studies that prove that third and fourth generation birth control pills have a higher risk of causing a thrombosis than the older second generation birth control pills. Large-scale pharmaceutical studies have shown that a thrombosis occurred in 6 out of 10,000 women taking a second-generation birth control pill and in 12 out of 10,000 women taking a third or fourth-generation birth control pill. The risk has doubled, but what are the reasons for this increased risk? In order to compete within the pharmaceutical industry, pharmaceutical companies have decided to market their birth control pills as some sort of a lifestyle product. Bigger breasts, better skin, more beautiful hair. This sells well, but on the other side, these increased side effects also cause a higher risk of getting a thrombosis. To sum it up, the pharmaceutical industry decided to release new pills on the market knowing that these better selling lifestyle products would more likely cause a thrombosis. The question arises, shouldn't the side effects actually be reduced and shouldn't the health of women and people be the top priority? As we said earlier, these developments and the strong side effects lead to a revolution in the bedroom. More and more women say no to hormonal contraception and even studies underline this trend. For example, a study initiated from the Techniker Krankenkasse, a German health insurance company, showed that in between 2011 and 2018, 
The number of people using the pill in Germany decreased by 6%. Why? Because women don't want to suffer from the strong side effects anymore. Instead, they are using alternatives like the condom or natural family planning. But there's still no perfect method. Let's look on the other side, men. In 2021, men cannot really take responsibility regarding contraception, even though they want to. Because when we look at male contraceptives, it becomes really clear. Men hardly have options. Of course, there's the condom, which is very important and it protects you from sexually transmitted diseases. But other than that, there is no mass market method. And unfortunately, the condom is not really safe either, because when we look at the Pearl Index, which is estimated at 12, it states that 12 out of 100 couples that used the condom within a year still got pregnant. And this number is quite high compared to other contraceptives. And then there's another method for men, the sterilization, or called the vasectomy. Unfortunately, the sterilization is not really a method that young men can use. Doctors treat only men over 35 and who are already finished with their family planning because the vasectomy, the sterilization, is only reversible to 85%. So now we have talked a lot about the development of contraception and let's compare the different contraceptives. So on the one hand, there's the, the pill, injections, patches, IUD, the female condom, and I could go forever on this list. And on the other side, there's on only one real option for men, the condom. And this clearly shows an imbalance. But what are the reasons for this disparity? And why do we need more contraceptives for all genders? Looking at the development of contraception, it has always been a topic driven by individuals. To be precise, women. Only because of the engagement of two women, Margaret Sanger and Catherine McCormick, it was even possible to evolve the pill. But since 1960, since the first revolution, nobody has really talked about it. There was no social discourse and conversations were mainly in private. Looking at politics, the topic has never been brought up by any politician or political party. And we have a guess why. When we look at the German Bundestag, the average age of parliamentarians is 49.5 years. However, contraception is an issue concerning young people under 35. And when we look at the gender in the Bundestag, parliamentarians are usually male because only 31% of the parliamentarians in the Bundestag are female. So possible reasons why this topic has never been brought up is that the most politicians are male and old. Another key player regarding the development of contraception is, of course, the pharmaceutical industry, which unfortunately sees no market in male birth control. Pharmaceutical companies fear that if there was a male birth control in the market, the sales of female birth control would decline. And the industry assumes that only a few men would be interested in taking a male contraceptive. Best example for this is that Bayer stopped their studies on a male birth control because they thought the product might not be accepted. In 2005, over 9,000 men on every continent were asked if they would use a male contraceptive if there was one available for them on the market. And 60% said yes. This is 15 or 16 years ago. And our social mo role models have changed further and further, so I'm sure today even more men would say yes. And last but not least, there's one major reason why there is no male birth control on the market today. The whole time there was one very important link missing. An organization that bundled and represented the interests of people regarding contraception. Many people are unhappy with their contraception. 
complain about the lack of options, the expenses, and obviously also the side effects. But these conversations are only held in private. That is why we've created our initiative Better Birth Control. We finally want to be the missing link, the missing link between society, pharmaceutical industry, and politics. We want to achieve better and equal contraception for everybody, which society has been demanding for so long. Every person should have the possibility to use free and good contraception, because everybody should be able to decide whether to create a new human being or not. How can we achieve that? What can all of us do to make birth control better for everyone? Four easy steps. First, talk to your partners and friends about it. Tell them about your experiences with contraception and how you feel about it. If we all start talking about contraception, the demand for better contraception will increase and the pharmaceutical industry will notice this. Second, sign our petition, Better Birth Control, and support other initiatives in this field. Third, get active regarding contraception yourself. For example, in your field of studies, your university, or any other youth initiative. And fourth, demand better birth control in public. For example, on social media, and talk to your local politicians about it. We can all do something to make contraception better for everyone. We just need to talk about it and need to be open to change. The personal is political, yet this is not enough. Pharmaceutical industry and politics have a great responsibility to make contraception better for all of us. One major point is money, which is lacking to continue pharmaceutical and medical technology studies and to develop new contraceptives. Politicians must finally understand that contraception means health and is part of the reproductive rights of every human being. The same applies to the pharmaceutical industry. They have to take note of the great interest shown by the public and invest more money into research and the development of new contraceptives. The pharmaceutical industry is an important player to make new contraceptives marketable. We need a trialogue of society, politics and the pharmaceutical industry. We are in conversations with leading experts in fertility and they say that 50 million euros would be a realistic number to bring a new contraceptive on the market. At first, 50 million euros sound a lot, but let's compare it with other public spendings. For example, the German Autobahn or the highway. Building five kilometers of the German Autobahn costs 50 million euros. To bring a new contraceptive on the market is 50 million euros. And now we can decide whether to build five kilometers of the Autobahn or revolutionizing birth control. For me, the decision is pretty easy. Even though contraception is a very individual topic and we cannot tell you what's best for you, we wanted to show you that contraception has always been a topic driven from the bottom to the top. So from society to the political level. It is in our hands to revolutionize the current status of contraception. Contraception can only become better if the society, politics, and the pharmaceutical industry act together.